In this video, we're just going to cover a few tips that might help you whenever you have a complex object to auto retopologize. So what we have here is an insect model that actually has a lot of child layers. And if you're coming from a ZBrush background where you're working with subtools, uh, these are essentially the equivalents here. And what we want to do is instead of auto retopologize each individual layer, which we could if we wanted, uh, what we want to do is actually create a blank layer and we want 3D Coat to merge all those layers into a single copy and we want it to be rather simplified because while we obviously want to use the high detail, the high resolution state for texture baking purposes, we want to do just a reverse for auto retopology. If you think about it, you're handing such a complex task over to an algorithm, not a person, an algorithm. So we want to reduce the complexity as much as possible. Let's go ahead now and I've got a blank layer here and I'm going to change this to voxels because this will calculate a lot quicker. All right? Whereas if I'm trying to merge a lot of surface mode meshes, it, it can be a little bit complex and so a 3D coat sometimes may return a, a Boolean type of error. So uh, what I'll do is I'll just simply keep this layer as a voxel layer and I might give it one or two levels of resolution before I try and do all this. With voxels it's pretty important to remember that scale has a lot to do with just how dense the model is. So the larger the scale the denser it is. The smaller the scale the less density it will maintain. So Let's right click and choose Merge Visible. And what this will do is it will collapse all those layers of everything we can see into a single unified layer. So let me hide the original. And you can see uh, it did a fairly good job. So let's zoom in and I can hit the wireframe hotkey, which is W. All right. So I might keep this original copy like this, but I'm going to create a degraded version by clicking on this clone and degrade. So I'll hide that original version here. And so this one is much lower, much lower resolution. And so what I'm going to do now is go to the bottom of the tool panel, or you could hit the space bar, and I'm just going to click smooth all. And I have a hotkey assigned to that, so I can just continue hitting that hotkey. And so I really want to get rid of all those little projectiles. Okay, so with that done, I'm now going to uh, hit the hotkey for wireframe to turn it off, toggle it off, I should say. Okay, and I can see that... Uh, during the smoothing process, I lost a little bit of the legs down here. So let me undo a little bit. I'll undo till we get close to our original stage here. And so what I could do is just extrude just a slight amount. Okay. And so now when I smooth, I'll have enough to maintain the uh, smaller portions of the model here without them being lost. Okay, so with that done, we're now ready to right click and choose Auto Retopo. And so I have to guesstimate how many polygons I'm gonna need on this model. I'm gonna shoot for about 12,000. Okay, and I'm going to apply symmetry down the z-axis. Leave hard surface retopology unchecked because I don't want to work with that. And I think we can proceed. This next dialog is asking if I want to paint select areas to apply higher levels of polygonal density and since 
I have a few areas that are rather thin. I probably do. So let me go ahead and probably just paint these areas. Since I have symmetry turned on, it's going to do it to both sides. Okay, I think that will suffice for now. And so the next stage is applying stroke guides. And here we want to remember a few rules. One is we don't want any intersection of stroke guides that can cause some errors. Also, we want to keep it rather simple. We don't want to put too many, even though you know there would be a temptation to do that. Also, probably want to make sure that I have enough spline points density and so if you want a little bit of precision you can actually hold the control key and just click basically control points where you where you want them my hands not so steady so that helps quite a bit as opposed to just drawing it like this which is okay if 3d coat's going to smooth that line out but as you can see, the density is quite a bit, so I'm going to turn that back down. Okay, it's still rather large. Okay. And then we can actually smooth those lines by clicking here. In this case, I'm just going to continue holding the control key and just manually laying down individual control points. So just essentially keep in mind that you don't want to micromanage this just keep it rather simple. And you can keep it on one side instead of both. All right, so. I might put few here and start outside and end outside on the other end and it will make a, a closed loop and do that I want to do the other one and what I want to do is go to an orthographic view and uh, you can do that by hitting the 5 key on your number pad or click the little Q icon here and then I'll go to a, a sign view you can access them here or use your hotkeys as well. That way there's no perspective distortion at all. The last one, I want to bring it in just a little bit. And I'll apply one here and one at the base of the neck. And put a few on these appendages here oops so I'll hit my five key to come out of orthographic view
hold the control key and I'm just going to lay down some points to go around the eye area here. You close that off. Put one down the center. Do the same thing here. And if you've never used auto retopo before, what these guides do is it tells the algorithm which way you want this mesh to flow, which way you want the edge loops to uh, be oriented. Instead of just in a haphazard way, they actually follow a particular topological flow. So I might put another loop right here, kind of in the joints. And already this might be too much as it is, so I want to be careful. And I think these might be okay as far as the intersection. We'll see. If I have trouble, I might come back and just remove these loops around the joints. But overall, you really don't want to have intersecting lines if you can help it. Okay, so... Got an extra one here, and I can just click on it and then hit the delete key once it's highlighted. And hold the control key and lay down some points on the inner part here. Okay. So I think that's going to be it. And we'll go ahead and give it a run and see. See if we can get a good result out of this. So I hit next. Now pause while it calculates. Okay, and that took about two minutes to calculate. Overall, it came out pretty well. Yeah. I'm really surprised. It did a really good job here in the leg area. Captured most of the detail. Did a fairly good job in the head. And here we could stand to do a little bit of poly reduction by using the delete edges tool and in edge loop selection mode. And we could just go in and delete every other edge. Now, I've asked Andrew in the past for a dot loop feature, which would help reduce this, you know, the time to go in and do this significantly by selecting every other edge ring or edge loop. But overall, it's still quite amazing how well an algorithm on its own could do this. So, yeah. It looks like we have a few snapping errors here in the front, so allow me to clean that up real quick. What I typically will do is turn auto snapping off while I'm trying to fix issues like this. I typically will start off with a brush tool because it's one of the most versatile options for a task like this where you can push polys and relax as well. So if you hold the shift key you can click on a point and it'll snap back into place or pretty close. So I'll click on that again. I'm going to click on just that little point if it'll let me here there we go that kind of forces it back into its location let me turn symmetry back on
Now, otherwise, you could use select, you know, select the offending vertice or whatnot and uh, use the transform tool to move it back into place or something like that. But I think just using this little technique here can, can get us pretty close. Going to go ahead and pull my preview window back up. Okay, so I think we're good to go here. And there's like this where maybe it, it pops beneath uh, the surface. With auto snap off, uh, this helps you kind of fix those areas. And now I can just simply kind of push, push it back into place. And I'm not worried about this opposite side here because I'm going to copy one side to the other. Okay, so I think uh, we're good to go, and now with uh, the symmetry plane on, I can just click Apply Symmetry. Oops. Okay, mirror snapping. I'll turn that up to about 25. I'll try that again. Okay. Not sure why it's doing that. Let me turn symmetry off. Okay, I'll do the same thing here. Okay, turn symmetry back on. Turn auto snapping back on. And what I can do is just hold the shift key and just lightly tap. Even if you nudge, move something, it'll it'll snap right where you happen to move it, or right where you happen to move the, the polygons, the geometry. Okay. So, yeah, there we go. We're all fixed up. And, uh, yeah, it does a really remarkable job, especially on organic type surfaces like this. Now let's go back to the voxel room here. And actually I don't need to because I have the vox tree layer panel uh, present here, but what I can do is hide this simple low res duplicate and unhide the high detail, high resolution original. And when 3D Coat bakes, it's going to view all these children layers together with its parent as if it's one object. Alright, so I hope that helps and thank you for watching.